And now, Kutztown University Athletics and KUR present to you this week's edition of the Golden Bear Beat. This weekly radio program brings to you an in-depth look at the week in sports around campus, including game highlights, player and coach interviews, and an analysis of recent sporting events. Live on campus, let's send it to our host, Adam Dobrowalski. Good afternoon and welcome to the final edition of the Golden Bear Beat. I'm your host, Adam Dorovalski, here in the KUR studios on this Thursday afternoon, taking a look at a spring in review. We're here to wrap up eight spring sports today. In terms of our coverage on this show, there are still three sports that are in action looking to complete their regular season and perhaps make it into the NCAAs. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the rest of the spring sports which have wrapped up and give our final thoughts on this year in Kutztown Athletics. We'll first start off with the Kutztown University baseball team, which is already into the NCAA tournament. The Golden Bears this past weekend won its seventh ever PSAC championship. The Golden Bears, just 14-14 and in PSAC East play, made it in as a four seed into the conference championship tournament, but the Golden Bears in Butler, PA, ended up winning the quarterfinal round against Seton Hill, 2-1 to one in 12 innings, the semifinal round, 6-2 to two against Pitt Johnstown, and then the championship game, one to nothing against Millersville to win the tournament and get an automatic bid into the NCAA Atlantic Regional. Earlier this week, I sat down with the head coach of the Golden Bears and Chris Bloom and got his thoughts on the victory and what's to come up ahead. Coach, first and foremost, congratulations on, on winning the PSAC Championship Tournament. What do you think has been the difference over the past few weeks for the team's success? Uh, I believe some clicked, you know, after that Bloomsburg series and we got swept, and I'm hoping they just made a decision to say, you know, we're not going to go quietly and we're going to keep fighting and, until the fight is over. And they all came together as a team. I, I'm a huge believer in chemistry and enjoying yourself when you're on the field. And they seem to take off and do that ever since uh, that Bloomsburg series. If you can, just explain what the ride's been like. You've been down this road before winning PSAC championships, having ranked teams to make it all the way to the national championship finals, which we, we call the World Series uh, as the the unofficial name for it. So you, you, you've been in situations where you, you've had the dominant team, you've had the team that's been two over 500 to win the PSAC, and here, here's another chance team that went 14-14 and 14 in the PSAC East to win the championship. How, how does this ride compare to other rides? Well, this is a, a pretty magical ride. I mean, obviously when you have the 2007 team that was just an incredible team, uh, you're expected to win. But rarely is that the case for Kutztown, you know, due to resources, private schools coming into the, the conference now that have a whole lot more scholarship money. So I got to get the guys in here that are willing to fight and battle and, and confidence in themselves and their teammates. Uh, but the ride is, is still not over, and it, it's, it's at its peak right now. And we're just waiting for the, you know, the, the, the ride to end. And, and whenever that happens, it happens. But we know we got some more ball to play. Talk a little bit about the seniors in particular. In terms of the pitching, Colin and Brandon can't say enough about what they've done, not just at the PSAC Championship, but in the East Stroudsburg Series where they were able to really just pitch multiple double-digit innings in the PSACs, pitch both days against East Stroudsburg, but not to be forgotten, uh, the senior uh, seniors in the lineup, what they've been able to do. Just talk about how those guys have been able to lead by example. Well, I probably asked those pitchers to do more than I've ever asked pitchers uh, to accomplish for me in terms of using on multiple days and innings and pitch counts and all that stuff. But, you know, they all wanted the ball out there. The, the seniors in general, they, they were going to be the first four-year seniors that didn't have some sort of a championship and now they go and win one uh, in dramatic fashion the way we did. And it's just a, a compliment to them never giving up and, and keep on playing and, until somebody tells us we're done. What's going to be next here for the team when you have nearly a two-week break in between games? What's the preparation going to be like? We're just going to get out there, um, get some swings in, field some ground balls. We'll run through you know, the bunk coverages and, and picks and little things to stay sharp, but... It's going to be 
just having some fun out there, enjoying the moment, laughing with each other, uh, just getting a little bit of work in, but, you know, quality work. Also, earlier this week, I talked to five of the Golden Bears. One of those was the MVP of the postseason tournament in senior pitcher Brandon Shimmo. I got his thoughts on how the team's been playing as of late, his MVP, and of course, what's to come ahead. Brandon, first and foremost, congratulations on winning the PSAC championship and getting tournament MVP. Just your thoughts on, on really just how things have been panning out over the past few weeks. Well, lately, everything looks like it's been just clicking together. We had, we've we been hitting the ball a little bit better. We've been jumping on them right from the start, setting the tone by scoring a run in the first inning. And, uh, I mean, lately, the defense has been phenomenal. I think that's the key to these wins is the fact that we haven't had many errors. We've been making great plays when needed. Uh, that's what it comes down to is the defense. This might sound like a strange question that I'm going to ask either or, but Coach has been put, putting a lot on your plate over the past few weeks. You pitched both days against East Stroudsburg, one game each day, and then you pick, pitched twice, total of 11 innings in the uh, tournament. Do you feel that has added more pressure? Maybe it actually have taken some pressure off of you just knowing that you get the trust. Uh, well, being a senior and knowing where this was going, I wanted – the pressure I wanted to be in there when the game was on the line so I mean he personally didn't want to use me because he didn't want to abuse it but I told him right from the start each game that I was ready and whenever he needed me I'd be ready. Now going into the championship game it, it seemed like definitely you're going to get the call what was your confidence level coming into the game and what was your confidence level knowing that last year you when you were in Johnstown you had a complete game victory against Mercyhurst turf field here you had a turf infield did you feel like you knew that no matter what you can still attack batters attack them low get ground balls yeah I wanted to make sure I kept the ball low because with the turf infield it was going to help our infielders out play the ball a bit cleaner and the fact that the defense has been so solid I mean going into it I was confident knowing that I just I was 2-0 against them in my career I knew a lot of guys were out on the front foot, so if I was accurate with the breaking ball, I was going to get those ground balls and then just trust the defense from there on out. Congrats again, and best luck yeah. moving forward. Thank you, buddy. Also playing a big factor in this postseason run, a fellow senior pitcher in Colin Holmes who pitched 10 innings against the Griffins. Here's what he had to say. Colin, first and foremost, congratulations on winning the PSAC. Talk about the ride it's been, especially over the past few weeks. I mean, we all saw how we started out at the beginning of the year. But we finally started to come together at the end of the Bloom series, even though we lost four and then went on with Ship and then Lock Haven and East Stroud put us to where we are now. Now, for you personally, you've been pretty much lights out over the past month or so. What, if anything, has changed, or is it kind of just a sense of you knew it was towards the end of uh, your senior year and the urgency got a little bit higher? And the urgency definitely got a little bit higher. I started to catch some more breaks because early in the year, the little bloopers were falling. Now they're starting to find my defense so that's changed but other than that you just know you have to go out there and win particular for the Seton Hill game playing on a turf infield did that uh, help your aggressiveness anymore because it is a case where it goes faster off the infield and you don't have to worry about those little bleeder singles you can kind of just pitch to contact so did that help you at all in terms of your approach yeah it helped a lot I mean beginning of that game I was getting hit hard then by the end, I was starting to get the ball down a little bit, and I was using the turf to our advantage to get it to our players quickly. Colin, congratulations again, and best of luck moving forward. Thank you. As for some of the position players, how about all PSAC East first-team outfielder Brandon Martinez? He leads the team, batting over 400. His thoughts on the team's championship and much more. Brandon, first and foremost, congratulations on being a PSAC champion. How does it feel for you guys to make this late season run, not give up on the year, and now have a chance to make it to the Atlantic Regionals. It feels really good. I think it was important for us to get high at the end of the year. Last year we kind of finished off on a bad note um, against Westchester, losing 3-4. Um, or four. And this year we were able to uh, string some good wins together and go to the PSAC tournament pretty hot. Now for you, you make all PSAC first team. How does it feel uh, here, junior year, taking another step forward, hitting over 400 right now. Just how do you feel your game is at this point of the year? Um, well, I mean, that personal achievement is um, it's very important to me, but I think what's more important is um, our team performance and our team achievements, and um, winning the PSAC championship was definitely more important, um, and we look to keep um, playing hot and take that into the regional tournament. 
And for you personally, any keys to success moving forward, or is it just sticking to what with what you've been doing all year? Uh, it's just sticking to what we've been doing all year. We can't really change much at this point. I know a lot of superstitions are going around, so we're looking to just keep everything the same at this point. Congratulations again, and best of luck moving forward. All right, thank you. Also on the PSAC East first team is first baseman Kyle Stout, the senior played a big part in the Golden Bears making it this far, and here's what he had to say about the team's championship and their prospects. Kyle, first and foremost, congratulations winning the PSAC championship. Just your thoughts on really how everything's come together over the past few weeks in your senior year, a chance here to extend your career into regionals. I mean, a month ago, everyone was writing us off. We had no chance, and we just went out there and played like we had nothing to lose. We just wanted to be a spoiler, and we snuck into the Peace Act and just stayed hot. We ended up on top winning the whole thing. What did you think when it rained pretty much all day Wednesday and it was announced that the tournament would go from double elimination format to single elimination format? Obviously, the bad about it is you lose once, you're done. The good thing about it is if you keep winning, you don't have to worry about some team coming back and trying to beat you twice. You beat them, they're done. So what were your thoughts when you realized that change was going to happen? Um, first of all, I was a little nervous at first, thinking, you know, hey, we only have one chance, like you said. I mean, facing Seen Hill, but then I also realized – we have th- three good pitches, and that's the amount of games we had to win, so it actually helped us out in the end. How did it really impact your fielding to be in a turf infield? Because it just seemed like you guys were absolutely lights out throughout the three games defensively. I mean, playing on turf is a lot easier. You don't have to worry about the bad hops or anything like that, so you can just stay down the whole time and you come charge the ball because, you know, the bounces are going to be true. Personally, how does it feel to be named to the All-PSAC first team? It feels great. I mean, my brother did it when he was here, and I just wanted to top him and do the same thing. But just me personally, getting second team last year, uh, losing out to Stone, I thought it was nice that I can finally be on the first team. Congratulations again, Colin. Best of luck moving forward. Thank you. And finally, the man who helped to assist for the final out when the Golden Bears made it into the PSAC Championship Tournament and win it, it's Brandon Choish, an All-PSAC second team player in the East. Brandon, first and foremost, congratulations on winning the PSAC championship. Just your thoughts, uh, first year here since transferring from Lackawanna to be able to make it to the NCAA regionals. It's an amazing feeling. I mean, the guys, we've worked all year for this. And, uh, I mean, I can't, can't be more happy. I mean, it's, it's amazing. What went through your head? Two outs, chance to put the game away. And as the batter comes up, first swing goes towards you. What are you, what are your thoughts, or is it just kind of blocking out all the thoughts and doing your routine of getting that out? It was a lot of blocking it out. I mean, it was a big situation, and I just knew I had to field it first before anything else. And uh, I knew I wanted to get it to Kyle Stout senior year, so I let him make the last out to win the PSAC. And how does it feel to make all PSAC second team first year here at Kutztown? Oh, that's it's phenomenal. Um, I mean, the coaches for picking me for the second team, it, it's an amazing accomplishment for me, and I'm happy that they could do it. Best luck moving forward. Thank you. The Golden Bears are now 30-19 and 19 overall as they have, again, an NCAA Atlantic Regional berth. They will begin play at a to-be-determined location next Thursday. Our next sport we talk about is KU men's and women's track and field as the Golden Bears competed this past weekend in the PSAC Championships. The men finished fourth and the women finished sixth, but better yet, the Golden Bears had six individual winners. Zach Fleming won in the 3K steeplechase, Richard Gatewood won in the long jump, Tyler Brooks won in the triple jump, Lanny Buck won in the pole vault, Nicole Wildermuth won in the discus, and Rosaline Farrell won in the hammer throw. For all that success, we wanted to hear from head coach Ray Hoffman. Coach, overall, your thoughts on uh, how both teams performed outdoors this past weekend in Shippensburg? Um, I thought we had an outstanding uh, three days uh, down at Shippensburg. Um, you know, you look at the results, both the men's and women's teams exceeded expectations, um, really had some kids step up and take it to the next level, which you never know during championship time what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, the kids are ready, they're prepared, and, um, you know, they got the job done. What went into the six individual championships to get to this point? What all came together for those six? Well, I mean, you know, it, it starts back in the summer and the fall, just preparing and, uh, you know, believing in your fitness, believing in what your coach is doing with you. And uh, when physically, 
you know, you're prepared and then mentally, you know, you can do it and take it to the next level, you're going to get the job done. And, you know, that's basically what we told our kids, you know, from, from the neck down is done, from the neck up, it's up to you if you're going to get the job done or not. How did the kids themselves feel about the way this past weekend panned out? Because I, I assume for a lot of them, they're, while they're happy, the way things work, they feel this could be a springboard to even better things next year. Yeah, we have a pretty close team to begin with, but I, I think after the performances um, those those over those three days, um, we were probably more united than we've ever been. Um, you know, I know the guys' team is already looking forward to next year, even though we're not done with this year with the national meet coming up. Um, we have a lot of great returners coming back. Um, we have a good recruiting class coming in for next year, so the combination could, you know, yet take us to the next level here. You know, and on the women's side, um, we lose a couple key individuals, but uh, again, having a good year recruiting, having a really solid um, base coming back with the returners. So I think both programs are headed in the right direction. Coach, what's to come now? You have a, a few who are going to be competing, or many, I should say, who are competing this weekend at Georgian Court. What's going to be the game plan for that? And uh, what are the expectations for some of the individuals and how provisionals may play, uh, pan out. Yeah, we have a couple of things going on. On Friday, we have about eight individuals compete, and um, half of them we feel pretty confident are going to be getting into the national meet. And um, you know, three or four of them are right on the bubble, so we want to give them another uh, chance to uh, go after a mark to get them into the national meet here. So some of it's maintenance work, and some of it, you know, we're keeping our fingers crossed and performances get a little bit bigger. And then um, actually on Monday, we're going to be taking uh, one individual, Zach Fleming, down to Swarthmore for um, a last chance meet. It's a tune-up for him. He's going to run to 1,500 meters, and it's just to uh, keep him sharp for the championships coming up in uh, Grand Valley. And as you heard, there's still more work left for the Golden Bears this upcoming weekend with two last chance meets. So I got a chance to talk to some of the Golden Bears, including a PSAC winner in Richard Gatewood. First and foremost, Richard, congratulations on winning a PSAC title. Your thoughts just on how that event went and being able to win it? Man, the, the event went real good. You know, I, uh, my steps were a little off in the beginning, but I was jumping real good. So my last jump, I told him if I get on the board, I was going to win. Sure enough, I got on the board and I won. What does it feel like to have all that training done this year and for it to pan out at, so far at this point, the biggest meet of the year? It means a lot. It means that uh, I didn't come out here and work for nothing, you know what I mean? Now, moving forward, what what's your plan here? Uh, Coach told me you already have uh, an NCAA spot, so what what's the buildup going to be like from here? Well, my plan is to work hard until nationals and hopefully better my mark and get a uh, I want to get top five or top eight. That's all American, so that's fine with me. What's the, the biggest key at this point of the year for your training? Is it more of just the repetition, making sure your steps are right, or is there any extra uh, strength training that goes into this part of the year? Or is it just kind of just staying in the shape you are now? Right now it's more of uh, fine-tuning as opposed to like either getting strength or speed or whatever. So I just work on, want to work on the little things, and then that'll make – the big thing better anything else eating habits sleep that's that's gonna change at this point of the year is it just kind of monitoring it day by day finish finals and then get ready for nationals well it will change a little bit because you know the dining hall and stuff will be closed so i have to fend for myself now so yeah i have to try to monitor what i eat best of luck richard thank you also of note i got a chance to talk with paul volter emma sullivan who has a chance to make it into the ncaa's with a good showing in her last chance meet Emma, th this year, your thoughts overall, indoor, outdoor year, how things are going? This year, I was hoping to do a little bit better than I was height-wise, but I think that as far as um, like my pole vaulting form is improving, so it's just a matter of transferring over you know, the form from practice to the form in the meets. So that's like my main thing. I mean, so it's, it is good. It, I feel like I'm improving, but I just like my heights haven't shown it. Like I haven't PR'd yet. But um, I really I feel confident going into this next meet that like I have the height for it. I just need, everything needs to fall in line. What changes at this point of the year, not just the last week for, for the PSAC championships, but this kind of last push, so to say, what changes at this point of the year from the beginning of the year when you're trying to build up the form and build up the height? Well, at this point, no amount of practice is going to help me. It's like... I know what I have to do. My body can do it. It's just a matter of like mentally 
like being able to do it. And it's um, it's just different, like especially being here at practice with no one else. This is very different, not having my team there. So I guess it's really just a matter of like mentally honing in and like make like telling myself like I'm gonna make this bar and like I'm gonna make nationals. And what will it feel like to have it? I I know it's not gonna be as many people uh, this upcoming weekend who'll be there, but how does it? feel like to have other people who are kind of in the same boat as you where you can even though it's a smaller system still have that support structure this weekend I mean it's definitely still there I was just talking to my teammate about how we're like, like oh well even if we don't make it this year we'll make it next year we're like no this year we're making it this year so like we're already we're getting so excited and I know like my parents will probably come up so I'll have them cheering me on so uh, there's definitely still there and even if they're not there like physically like I know that they're hoping that I'll make it so it's all they're all there cheering even though they're not Emma, best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Also of note, senior Sarah Kimsey will be competing this weekend in the triple jump to try to get an NCAA qualifying time. Here's what she had to say. Sarah, so far, your thoughts uh, overall on how your year's been going? Um, it started out kind of a little bit not what I wanted. I mean, the past two years pretty much haven't been what I wanted, but finally I'm hitting where I want to be. That was a huge goal of mine was to hit 37 this year, and I finally did it at PSAC meet. So I was really excited about that, and so that, that's why I'm here today, because I finally hit my goal. So coach is taking me this weekend to see if I can hit a 38 now. Now, what is it like to be able to hit your top stride towards the end of the year? Because obviously, for those who do indoor and outdoor, you, you do have that small little climax to end the outdoors, uh, indoor season, excuse me. but then right as you go to outdoor, it's kind of trying to hit your peak at the end. So what is that like in terms of building up the training regimen and whatnot? Um, well, I mean, hitting that is extremely rewarding. Um, the training, I feel like it's, it's always really hard in the beginning because we're trying to build that foundation. So it's kind of hard on our bodies, especially for triple jump when you're pounding your shins. Like I always have a shin problem. So running on the indoor surface and then coming out and doing triple jump is always hard on my legs. So um, towards the end of the season, we start to rest up more. The, the workouts aren't as hard and they aren't um, as like pounding on our legs and stuff. So by the end of the season, it's, we're, it's go time. We're rested up and ready to go. So. And for you, will anything change from last weekend to this weekend, or is it just right now trying to just get that, that extra step, so to say, at the end? Yeah, yeah. It's, for me, it's just trying to just get a little bit more power to add, like, a couple inches to each phase, and that will get me out there. So it's just kind of maintaining what I have now and trying to build maybe a little bit more, but so we'll see. Best of luck this weekend, Sarah. Thank you. And last but not least, Christina Discano has a chance to make it into the NCAAs. She's preparing this week for a last chance meet, and I got a chance to talk to her. Uh, Christina, first, your thoughts overall on, on how your year's been going? Um, I think that my year's been going pretty well. Um, I recently PR'd in the long jump uh, with an 18.8 foot jump, and provisional is 18.8 and a half. So I'm hoping to get that this weekend or better so that I can definitely go to nationals. And seeing how the team did overall this past weekend in the PSAC championships, does that add any extra motivation or momentum, not just for you, but uh, your fellow performers who will be at the last chance this weekend? Um, yeah, I think so. Everyone pretty much PR'd and uh, tried their best. Um, and the people that are trying to qualify are all the ones that PR'd in their events. So I definitely think this weekend will be good and we're going to have a lot of fun. What has the training been like so far this year? Because, you know, a chance here for you to, to finish out your season with, with your best mark. How has that kind of built up to this point? Pretty much, well, I'm a, I'm a multi, so I train different events every day. But I guess regarding long jump, this week I'm excited because we're specifically focusing on that. Um, so I guess hopefully once I get that down, it'll be good. And one more question. What if anything is going to be different about training for this last chance meet, is there anything that's going to be different or is it kind of just going to be going with the, the same routine and making sure that you're just going with uh, your usual motions and going with uh, the usual training? Um, practice is pretty much going to be the same as it's been all year besides the fact that we're going to concentrate just on our specific event. Um, and I think definitely going into it, it's more relaxed and just to have fun. We're at PSAX. It's still fun, but you tend to get ner more nervous. So I think just having fun will definitely help people qualify. Christina, best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Best of luck to the Golden Bears this weekend at Georgian Court in Swarthmore. But the Golden Bears will find out next weekend if they make it into the NCAA National Championships, which will begin in two weeks. 
We're going to step off to break here on the Golden Bear Beat, but when we return on KUR, we'll continue with a look at the spring sports, taking a look at tennis, softball, golf, and much more. Stay tuned on KUR. And back here on the Golden Bear Beat as Adam Dorowalski in the KUR studios taking a look back to this year's spring athletics. And we start things off in this segment with Kutztown men's and women's tennis. The Golden Bear men finished this past year 15-6 overall, and that included a 5-0 mark in the PSAC. That made the Golden Bears the top seed in the conference tournament where they would finish second, losing to Edinburgh in the championship game. Nevertheless, though, the Golden Bears made it into the NCAA tournament, and as a seven seed in the Atlantic Regional, they won a first-round game against West Virginia Wesleyan this past Saturday, 5-2. to two. Then Sunday against Edinburgh, the Golden Bears took all three doubles matches, but unfortunately the Fighting Scots fought back, ending the Golden Bears season, winning 5-3 to three and advancing to Orlando, Florida. Meanwhile, for the Golden Bear women's tennis team, a lot of progress in the spring gave the Golden Bears a 9-9 overall record and a 4-2 mark in the PSAC East. First, as we hear from the tennis teams, we hear from head coach Suresh Ramamurthy. Coach, just your thoughts overall, both men and women, on how things progressed from fall to spring this year. Uh, we had a great year. Uh, you know, we, we had a slow start in the fall, and uh, both the teams picked up, uh, you know, and worked very hard over the winter break and spring, and then we proved ourselves very well spring break, built up our confidence and momentum, and uh, finished the season, you know, just where we wanted, you know, and uh, we were hoping for a little extra miracle, but, you know, we were very happy with the way, you know, everything turned out. What does it say about the men's team to be able to get back into the NCAA tournament, win another NCAA tournament game, and continue that standard of excellence for Kutztown men's tennis? Well, it is, uh, it's amazing because uh, they're a good group of kids, and uh, uh, it just goes to show that, you know, talent alone does not win. Uh, as we did in the past, you know, these guys work very hard, and that was a difference. And um, uh, we will keep, you know, working on that and uh, working on new recruits to help the team. But uh, it has to do with, you know, personal uh, beliefs and hard work. As for the women's side, Hannah gets PSAC Athlete of the Year as a junior. Talk about her progression and just the overall progression of the women's team to have another winning season in the PSAC East and another uh, PSAC tournament appearance. Uh, yes, um, Hannah has done uh, uh, you know amazing uh, things over the years. When she first came in here as a freshman, you know she uh, had Redima to uh, to help her out, and uh, even though she was injured, and then Hannah stepped up, and she, I think after a year, she figured out you know that hard work does pay off, and she bought into our program. And uh, this past year, she's worked extremely hard. Uh, with by herself and with the team and with the men's team as well. So uh, she is really finally proving to herself that uh, she's got uh, plenty of more potential. As far as the girls' team goes, you know, they really rallied around Hannah and uh, they kept pushing each other. Uh, and, uh, you know, as we work a lot on not just the physical part but the mental part of teaching them how to uh, be prepared for emergencies. As uh, we always say, tennis is a game of emergencies, and we do everything in the power, power to you know, make these girls think more critically. And moving forward to the summer, what's going to be the key for many of these returning players and the incoming recruits to make sure when they get here in the fall that they're ready to hit the ground running? Well, the one thing I've told each and every one of them is that the first week in, uh, the last week in August when they get here, they better wow me. Uh, with the hard work, and they've been given a, a program to work on uh, all through the summer, and there's no letting up, and they're enthusiastic about that, and they will be playing more uh, leagues and matches and tournaments over the summer, uh, so that's going to be keep them competitive throughout the year. Thanks a lot, Coach, and best of luck moving forward into another year. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Also, earlier this week, I was able to talk to one KU men's tennis player and one KU women's tennis player. The men's tennis player has been a foundation-type player over the past few years in senior Rushi Amin. 
Amin was named the 2014 Male Senior Scholar Athlete of the Year by the university and really made a lasting impact on this team in the past few years. And here's what he had to say about this year and the Golden Bears' future. Brucey, your thoughts overall on, on the year for yourself and for the team? Uh, well, we had a pretty good year. Um, definitely not as great as last year, but we would have liked that, of course. But, uh, you know, we still made it to the BSEC finals. We were top seeds entering entering the tournament. So, overall, we've had a good year. We were we were 15 and, and 6 this year, I believe, including all the championships. So, you know, a uh, lot of things, uh, a lot of hard work put in it, a lot of success, some disappointments, and, and at the end, a lot of uh, a lot of things to learn. Personally, how do you think you've progressed from a freshman now to a senior? <laughs> well, uh, I came in as a 17-year-old, and now I'm 21, so <laughs> that's four years, uh, definitely an adult. Uh, but, yeah, just just uh, in terms of tennis, I've learned a lot about the game coming in. Uh, you know, learned a lot from my teammates, from my coaches, from my trainers. Everyone has helped me so much and, and just developed as an, uh, as an all-around tennis player, all-around individual as well. And uh, I hope that I could carry, carry on uh, and continue improving. And what are your expectations for the team next year? Obviously, your impact's been major. Varun next year is going to be a senior. His impact's really been huge as well. So uh, you guys have kind of been two linchpins for this program. But what are your expectations now that he's going to be a senior? What are the expectations you think for the team? Well, the the expectations are certainly high. Uh, the bar is always set high for for us to perform because. Uh, uh, we've had a lot of championships, and and that's how that's how uh, people see it. Uh, the tennis team now, the men's tennis team especially. So definitely the bar set pretty high and they're just going to have to meet the expectations. I'm still going to be here uh, assisting our coach to uh, in, to help the team, uh, you know, probably get a PSAC championship the next year. So that's what definitely we're going to work on. And, and Vern definitely has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders, including all the other seniors as well, uh, Ben, Kenny, Matt, so uh, Parth. So it's it's going to be tough for them, and and the the responsibility, the expectation, everything is high, and they're just going to have to step up. And uh, uh, I believe in them, and we'll see what happens. Great job throughout your career, Rushi. Best of luck moving forward. Thank you. Appreciate it, Dan. Meanwhile, the KU women's tennis player we heard from is the PSAC East Athlete of the Year in her sport, in junior Hannah Pipkin. Here's what she had to say about the award and the team season. First, Hannah, congratulations on winning PSAC East Athlete of the Year. Your thoughts just overall how the year went for yourself and for the team? Uh, thank you. Um, I think it went really well. Um, me personally, I had a really good year. My two losses were in two thirds at tiebreakers, so they were really close and I could have won them both. So I had a really good year. And then the girls, we almost got to the championships for PSACs, which was real, a lot better than what I expected for this year. So everyone did really well. We stepped up after losing two seniors last year. What has changed from last year to this year for you? Well, def I lost my um, doubles partner, Redima, so that was hard. And to find a better um, uh, match, which I did, uh, Tori Zander, who's a senior this year, she fit in really well and just getting the freshmen to come in and filling those, like, one in three spots of what we lost last year. So, What is the team going to miss with the graduation of Tori? Um, we're going to miss a captain because she was the captain this year and just her um, enthusiasm for the team, I think. I mean, we all love her, so we'll just miss her a lot on the team. Obviously, a lot of expectations now for you and the team moving forward. What are your plans right now to kind of build upon that this summer? Um, I'm definitely going to work on my endurance and getting stronger along with the other girls on the team. We're going to work a lot um, – off court, I think this summer is just so we can get strong and like physically fit. So I think that's the plan for the summer, and we're gonna I'm gonna hit as much as I can, but focus on my fitness. First, Redima, now you winning that PSAC East Athlete of the Year. What does that say about the strength of this program at where it's at right now? Um, I think that the Kutztown Tennis Program gives us room to grow a lot from when, from freshman to junior or senior year. You really see all your progress because. We get to play a lot, no matter what your spot is, so you can grow a lot as a player. So both Redeem and I had a lot of playing time. So with that, I mean, it shows that we work hard to get where we are. So One final question. What were the standout moments for this year? That's a good question. I mean, our two rivals are Bloomsburg and Westchester, who we lost to. Those are the two teams above us. But I think they were still my favorite moments because everyone like stepped up and we came a lot closer to beating them than what we were expected to. So even though we had losses, everyone played their best those days, I think, and so did I personally. 
So even though they were losses, I think they were personal victories for everyone. Great year, Hannah, and best of luck moving forward to next year. Thank you very much. There'll be great stuff coming up for the Golden Bears tennis teams, both men and women moving forward, and we wish them the best of luck this summer in their training. Now we go on to the KU softball team. The Golden Bears enter the year as the two-time defending Atlantic Region champions. Unfortunately, this year did not go as planned. The Golden Bears finished the year 20 and 29 overall, missing out on the PSAC tournament in the NCAA postseason. But for the Golden Bears, still a lot of good things to talk about. And first, I talked to head coach Judy Laws about the year that was. Uh, coach, just uh, your thoughts overall. I, I know it was a, a tough year record-wise for the team, but just thoughts overall on how uh, the team was able to compete down the stretch this year. Um, we had a lot of you know close games. Unfortunately, not as many went our way um, as we have liked. But I think it was um, learning experience for the new kids and the young ones. And, uh, you know, we're just going to build on it for next year, build on the season and and uh, try to move forward. Thoughts on the four seniors this year, how their careers pan out at Kutztown and what they left for the program? Uh, Jackie, you know, has a lot of records and did a great job for us. Um, Four-year starter in Morgan Booth. Stephanie Curry, you know, was a leader this year, really helped us um, communicate um, all the things needed for the team. And then Colleen, you know, only being here two years, we wish uh, we could have her another year. But, you know, obviously her offensive power helped us last year to get into the World Series and compete. Now, moving forward, what's what's going to be the, the plan here for uh, the players who are going to become upperclassmen, the incoming recruiting classes, as you guys at least have it planned now here in May? What's going to be the thing that moves forward for this program to get right back to that that chance to make it to uh, the nationals I, th- I think our recruiting so we have 12 recruits coming in that have signed national letters of intent we've you know spent a lot of time the last two years really getting to know these kids and we think they're the answer to our problems and then the people that are here are you know are continuing student athletes really are going to help have to do a good job in leading and helping them show the way of how we do things here at Kutztown for this upcoming off season what's going to be the key for the returning players just to make sure that uh, they stay in shape and have that motivation of getting back to the the expectations yeah I, I mean I think they're all doing well academically and just going home relaxing over the summer doing what they have to do jobs and and obviously they'll have uh, conditioning that I'm sure they'll all you know take care of themselves and then just come back and uh, be ready you know for another season also I got a chance to talk to the four seniors and this includes an all PSAC East first team player and first baseman Colleen Smith Here's what she had to say about the year. Colleen, your thoughts uh, on your senior year personally and uh, with the team? Obviously, I think it could have went a little bit better, but um, I think it was definitely a great learning experience for not only us, but for the freshmen as well. Every every year you have to know that it, you know, it is a game and you have to have fun with it and you have to be competitive with it. So I think that the learning experience was really such a great thing for the whole team as a whole. Now, I know you hit the ground running to begin your two years here at Kutztown, but what may have changed from last year to this year for you personally, whether it be your approach at the plate or in the field? This year I had to realize that, um, you know, last year it was my first year and no one knew anything about me. So, you know, I did excel with that, but I think this year I had to realize that, you know, I have to work on little things with my game because I'm not a secret anymore. So I think I truly try to focus on that. Overall, what are some of the best moments through your two years here? My favorite thing in the whole wide world was last year, national championship. Um, The whole run that we had was such an experience, and seeing all the role models that we've become and the role model that I've become personally because, you know, you go to PSAC championships and you go to the national championship and you see all these little kids that look up to you and that's where they want to be. Um, you know, as a teaching experience, I I couldn't have, I can't take that away. And that was, that was great. And, you know, also the friendships I've made because, you know, I've, I've only been here for two years. I feel like I've been here forever. And just uh, any, I guess, final messages that you would leave, not just to Kutztown softball, but just to any incoming Kutztown athlete about uh, the athletic program here? Um, it's a great program to be a part of. Everyone knows who everyone is. It's a very successful program. Um, softball is a very successful program. And you see what all the teams are doing now um, in the spring and with fall and winter. You know, we make it to championships, and we really do take pride in what we do. Not to be forgotten, a player 
that is top 10 in numerous different categories, including a school record for hit-by-pitches. That is senior outfielder Jackie Hetzler. I asked her her thoughts on this year, her four-year career, and some of her record-setting play. Jackie, first and foremost, your thoughts on your senior year? Didn't really go as we expected in the end of going as far as we wanted to, but to be able to work with the team I did and gain the experience I did with each player and get to know each player was awesome. And also I was able to accomplish many of my end goals that I had set since my freshman year by my senior year. So that was pretty awesome to be able to do. You have a school record, uh, one first place by yourself, uh, and other ones where you ranked in the top ten. What, what do you think that kind of speaks to? Is that something that, um, you know, that you really set to personally, or is it just a case that you just kept putting in the hard work for four years and it happened to get that, that high up in terms of records? Um, well, coming in as a freshman, I knew I always wanted to be like an impact player. I wanted to start as a freshman, and I was able to. And I always set my goals like really high and expectations high. So I knew I wanted to at least get on some of the records. No, I didn't know I was going to be able to get on as many as I did and even be able to break a Kutztown record. But um, I saw that as going on each year, each year, that it was possible, except for especially for my hit-by-pitch because I had so many, I knew that that goal was definitely reachable for me. Now, what has progressed for you from being a freshman to now a senior? Uh, knowing the game, definitely a much more. Coming as a freshman, of course, you're going to think that you know everything about your sport, but you really don't until you get to play with older, more experienced girls and you learn more from your coaches. I've become much more of a mature, relaxed, um, smart player. And, and, but still aggressive at the same time, but much more smart. And what were some of the things that you and your fellow seniors told some of the younger players this year that can help them to move forward? Uh, we always taught and try to instill in our underclassmen to be confident and know that you are as good as you are because you made it here, you made it to Division II softball, one of like the best-ranked teams, to know that you always got to have that confidence whenever you play. Jackie, congrats on the great career, and best of luck moving forward. Thank you very much. Also of note, senior Stephanie Curry. She's been a four-year player for the Golden Bears and has become a team leader in her four years. Here are some of her thoughts on her time with the Golden Bears. Steph, uh, first and foremost, your thoughts uh, on your four-year career here at Kutztown. Um, it started off slow, but it was pretty good. It was a lot of new friends I met and good memories for four years. Now, I know record-wise, the uh, senior didn't pan out as expected, but just your, your thoughts on developing from a freshman to a senior leader in your four years. My personal thoughts about it? Um, you kind of got to listen, first off, of the upperclassmen. You also got to get that team aspect and start with that, first off. And with us being such a young team this year, it didn't help as well, as well to start off, but... We grew stronger as we went on, but just too late. Best memories, what are some that you have from your career? Um, best memory ever is going to Kentucky. One thing I'll never forget. And just the hits I had this year, like the big hits as my senior year. It was really awesome. Uh, any uh, parting message that you might have for the underclassmen or the incoming freshmen? Stay strong, keep your head up. Uh, try to pick up where we started two years ago. And last but certainly not least, Morgan Booth, the senior and a four-year starter for the Golden Bears. She's had a fantastic four-year career, like Hetzler, starting all four seasons. Here's what she had to say. Uh, Morgan, your thoughts just this year and overall for your Kutztown career? Um, this year did not go as planned. We, our record didn't turn out how we wanted it to be. We didn't make postseason, and that was a big disappointment. But I'm just very thankful for... Uh, being able to go to the World Series not only once, twice, because most people don't even get to go once, and nothing will ever top the experience of Kentucky. To be able to have some records, top 10, you know, in terms of school marks like stolen bases, sacrifice hits, being a four-year player, what pride do you have in establishing that role throughout the four years as a Kutztown softball player? I didn't really pay attention to stats, and I'm not really, it's not like my main concern. Um, but if you can get records and be 
like the top people that hold those records, then you're obviously going to help the team. So I'm just like proud of it in that way. Now, I know obviously going to the World Series twice it, from a team aspect it is a highlight of your career. Was there any personal game or any personal moment that might kind of shine above the rest in terms of your own success? Probably just my sophomore year when coach turned me around for the first time during postseason um, to the left side instead of the right. Um, I think that whole end of the year, um, I helped as much as I could by getting the bunts down, getting on base so we had base runners. So I think I'm just proud of like that, not specifically a game, but like that time. How do you want to be remembered uh, as a Kutztown softball player by your teammates, by your coaches, and just people who have followed the program in general? Just that even if things didn't go my way, I cared so much about it, and just that I played with heart every single game, and it's really sad that it's over, but I tried my best every single game, and not a lot of people can say that. And uh, any just parting message just in terms of uh, the incoming freshmen and uh, the underclassmen right now? Just work hard and respect your leaders because there has to be a leader on the team, whether you are friends with them off the field or not. Um, your upperclassmen you need to respect because nothing can really beat experience, just like coaches top all of that because the players don't have 27 years of experience under their belts like the coaches do, so they need to believe in that. Congrats on a great career, Morgan. Best of luck moving forward. Thank you. With what should be a fantastic incoming recruiting class and now a Golden Bears team that has a lot of experience, next year certainly will be a bounce-back year for the Golden Bears. We're going to step off to another break here on KUR, but when we return on the Golden Bear Beat, we'll close things out. We'll take a look at two more sports to close out our time here on the Golden Bear Beat. Stay tuned on KUR. And back here on the Golden Bear Beat, Adam Dorowalski in the KUR studios as we're wrapping up our final show of the Golden Bear Beat Taking a look at the spring sports in review, and for this segment, we'll start things off with the Kutztown University golf team. Another fantastic year for the Golden Bears. Through the fall and spring, they played in 10 tournaments. One six of them finished in the top three in nine of them. Golden Bears having a lot of success over the last two years in particular, and I sat down yesterday to talk to head coach Robert Fisher on his thoughts on how the team performed in 2013 and 2014. Coach, between the fall and the spring, another year for the golf team winning six tournaments. Just your thoughts overall on how the year went overall? I thought it was a great year for our girls. Um, won a whole bunch of tournaments again. We had a lot of individual winners this, uh, this semester in particular. What's really rewarding is we had two seniors who really played well down the stretch, especially Devin Everett. Um, she won she came in second the last two events of the year and really had closed out a, a solid nice strong career for us I was really really proud of her and really happy what was the progression you saw from the fall to the spring for especially some of the uh, younger athletes you know we had a big contribution from uh, Kelly Quigley this year um, and we're gonna count on her to play in the top five she's been on the team now three years and she's our rock star as far as academics goes. Uh, she has just about a 4.0. However, she hasn't really distinguished herself um, on the golf course until this semester. Um, she was second in scoring this semester for the team and uh, she's coming back for her senior year. We're really going to need her and just super pumped that she's playing good golf. What do you feel has been the impact for your seniors, not just this year, but in their tenure at Kutztown? Uh, we've had just great contributions from our senior girls, leadership, um, pride in the program. Uh, they're the type of girls that really we want the face of our program to be, just class acts on and off the golf course, great students, great ambassadors of the game, and Kutztown University women's golf. As for the potential returning players and for the incoming recruits, what's the next step forward for Kutztown golf? Next year, I'm going out on a limb, could be our best year ever. Um, 
Well, yeah, we lose really two really good players. However, I got an outstanding transfer coming in, and with the girls that we currently have on our team progressing throughout their careers, um, Lauren Smith, uh, Madison Houseseal, and now Kelly Quigley, and great freshman this year, one of the better freshmen we've ever had out there in Madison Beer, along with um, a couple of recruits and an outstanding transfer. It could be really, really big things for us next year. Thanks a lot, Coach, and best of luck uh, heading into the summer, not just for Good Sound Golf, but Good Sound Wrestling. Thanks, Adam, for great coverage on both of my sports all year. Have a great summer. And, of course, we also want to hear from one of the players. So I talked to senior Devin Everett on what was a fantastic close to her Kutztown career and, of course, the KU golf program over the last four years. Devin, first and foremost, just your thoughts on how your senior year went personally. Um, personally, it was my record best. Um, I really enjoyed it. I had some record low scores. There's times where I didn't finish as well the second day as I would have liked to, and I would have liked to improve that. But overall, I think I ended pretty decently. And just for you, what has changed from your first year here at Kutztown to now as a senior? Actually, a lot has changed, and mostly with my confidence and um, the way I work with the team and the way um, I kind of put too much pressure on myself to begin with. And now it was more about just having fun and getting out there and getting it done for the team instead of just myself. Now, the last two years, both years, the teams won six tournaments and both years finished off really great in the spring. How does it feel to be surrounded and be a part and an integral part of such success over the last two years? Oh, it feels great. Um, the girls have really, we've really worked hard and we've really, you know, gotten things done and um, getting all those trophies at the end of the day and really working hard and seeing it pay off has, has really been rewarding. And I'm also really proud of all the other girls who really also worked really hard for this. So. Now, what are some of the things that you, Jackie, and Lauren as seniors have said to some of the golfers who could be returning next year to continue to build upon that success? Um, we just don't like to put too much pressure on them. You know, they, they can get it done for themselves. They're good girls, and they work really hard. And, you know, a lot of, as you see, a lot of these girls come in and with a little bit higher scores, and they're bringing them down. Like Kelly, for example, Quigley, she's doing great. Um, she had a really great season. And, you know, people like that who, you know, come in and they get over the whole new atmosphere kind of thing, and they really bring their scores down. They're doing great. So we have a lot of faith in them, and they know what they're doing. So they'll get it done. Is there any one tournament in your career or any one moment that particularly stands out that you really uh, can may consider like the high point of your career? Um, the high point of my career was just um, two weekends ago at um, East Strasburg University. Um, their tournament, I shot a 75, which is my record low for my collegiate career um, the first day. And I missed um, winning the whole tournament by two strokes because I really um, screwed up kind of the second day. But overall, it was a great day, um, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself for finishing in the top two in the last two tournaments. So, Thanks, Devin, and best of luck moving forward. Thank you. Like it's been with many of the spring sports, expectations established, and they hope to build upon it for next year. Well, again, we wish the Golden Bears best of luck over the summer as they prepare for the fall season coming up. Now for our final sport, last but not least, Kutztown University Lacrosse. The Golden Bears have been in a rebuilding project under head coach Kate Scattergood, but in year two, a lot of steps were made for the Golden Bears. 4-12 and record overall, two wins in the PSAC, but all four of their wins on the road. So the Golden Bears showing that toughness, being in a lot of close games and being able to transfer their confidence and their execution on the road. I sat down with Coach Scattergood earlier this week and got her thoughts on the 2014 season and much more. Coach, it's your second year here with the program as a head coach. Your thoughts on how things progressed this year? Uh, I think, you know, we definitely took steps forward. Um, we had an increased win total. Wasn't as much as we wanted, but it was. Um, we had increased conference performance, and it might not be again to the level that I think we could have been to. But we, we did do that, and we take the positives away from that to continue building into the future. Now this year, all four of your wins came on the road. Did you notice anything different, or was it just a case that it just happened to be the performances where you were able to put together the victories were on the road as opposed to home? I think that was a coincidence. I like to think that was a big coincidence um, because we did have a couple games at home that were very close, uh, including our Edinburgh game where it got off to a low start, but it was a one-goal game. Um, all the way down to the wire, and we actually had a great performance um, 
against Bloomsburg at home, who was a very strong team in the conference and really played a great game against them. So I, I think that was just coincident with how things worked out as far as those four wins happened to be on the road this year. What do you have to say about the three seniors and what they've provided to the program over the years, at least the two that you've been here? Um, you know, they made great commitments to the team. Uh, they did everything they could this year on the field. Um, I hope they walk away with great careers, you know, and again, seeing that things got better over the two years I've been here, I hope. Um, we were in, in, able to increase some of those wins, and again, PSAC performance, one of the things we did talk about with the seniors as they left, I don't think they ever beat Millersville in their career here until this year. I don't think they ever beat Slippery Rock in their career until this year, and carrying the positive things like that, again, um, accomplishing some different things here, and that's exactly what we wanted to do. I know it may seem like a long time, but it's obviously going to come quicker than uh, expected. But moving forward, what what is it going to be the focus for the team on the field moving forward, for the returning players recruiting-wise? What's going to be the next step for Kutztown Lacrosse? Uh, it's never too early to think about that. That's all we're thinking about right now is kind of moving forward and, and again, what we need to do to have more wins next year um, and better conference performance and standing. Uh, you know, as, as always in college, you, you know, you graduate seniors and you bring in new freshmen. So we're hoping that the team continues to develop and move forward talent-wise. Um, and I think we will. Every team in the conference is going to get better, though, too. So we just take it day by day, continuing to develop the players we have and continue to develop our game so it equates to those wins next year. And, of course, we'd like to hear from some of the seniors. First, the team's goalkeeper, over the last four years, in Joanne McLaughlin. Uh, Joanne, your thoughts just on, on your senior year, how you did personally and how the team did? I think I personally did pretty well. I could have done a little better, but the team came together and played awesome. I don't think our record totally shows that, but I think in the next few years, the record's definitely going to show the improvement. Two questions on progression. First, your four years here, and then second, just overall the, how the team's been over the last two years with Coach Scattergood? Um, personally, my first two years I did okay, and then with Coach Scattergood I improved tremendously just even on the field and off the field trying to be a better leader um, out in the school environment and in the classroom. And team-wise, I think we improved so much, but our, again, our record doesn't show that but everyone has much better skills and every other team in the PSAC's improving and so are we. So I'm excited to see what has in store for them in the next few years. What are some of the things that you have said, Lauren has said and Christine said uh, as seniors to the uh, players who could be returning next year and uh, even if you've had contact with some of the recruits who may be coming in next year, what are some of the things that you've said to them so far? Um, just play every day as it's your last because it ends so quickly and that they're lucky to be able to play at the Division Two level and also to be able to play under Coach Scattergood, that she has a great mind for lacrosse and knows what she's talking about and can help everyone on the field and off the field. Any standout game or performance or honor or award that you may have gotten in your four years that really you kind of look at as maybe uh, some of the peak moments? Um, probably getting chosen to be MVP three out of my four years and also being a PSAC scholar athlete. Um, I tried as hard as I could in the classroom and through my teaching and everything to try and balance academics and athletics. So that went pretty well. Joanne, congrats on a fantastic career and best of luck moving forward. Thanks, Adam. And finally, another four-year player in senior Christine Bodecker. I got her thoughts on the year and her Kutztown career. Christine, first and foremost, your thoughts uh, on this year, your senior year? Um, I think that our wins definitely don't reflect the progress that we've made. Um, our record is always kind of tough for us, but um, we're making good strides and the program is increasing. So hopefully next year and the years continuing, it'll get better. And for you, just your thoughts four years overall playing lacrosse at Kutztown? I think it's been a great experience. I think this year, finally, our team has kind of come into that family atmosphere, and it's definitely something I don't regret, and I'll always remember my four years here playing at KU, and it's been great to be a Division II athlete. What has changed for you from freshman year to senior year? I think the structure of the program's changed, but I think it's changed in a good way. I think the leadership has changed and grown positively, and um, that's affected the team and helped us grow as a team and become closer than we used to be. For you, Joe and Lauren, what do you think 
the lasting impact is going to be for the rest of the returning players? Um, I hope that we left a positive, lasting impact for them. I hope that they can grow from us and that, you know, they'll know that we kind of helped them develop into what they are today and that we're, we were a push for them to start to become better. And what type of message did you three seniors leave uh, to the returning players for next year? Um, I think we left a message of positivity and to always try, never give up. Um, I know with Schlitt and her injury, Joe with her injuries, like me, I never had any serious injuries, but as seniors, all three of us, we always gave our 110%, and I think that that's our message that we wanted to leave to them. Christine, best of luck moving forward. Thank you. There'll be a lot of steps moving forward for this Kutztown lacrosse program, and certainly excited to see what the Golden Bears will put on the field next spring. But that just does it here. For this edition of the Golden Bear Beat this year of the Golden Bear Beat, and personally, my time, Adam Dorowalski, as your broadcasting graduate assistant. It's been a blast over the last two years on a weekly basis to talk about Golden Bears athletics. But just a reminder, you can log on to KUBears.com for all your updates, not just for the rest of the events going on this spring, but into the summer. And then, of course, during the fall, we'll get as much as we can on the Golden Bear Network for Kutztown Athletics Broadcasting. Until next time, we sign out how we always do. It is, yes, indeed, bitter to part, but we say it and we'll continue to say it, not just this year, not just this summer, but throughout time. Go Bears Go! Thank you for listening to this week's edition of the Golden Bear Beat. Make sure to stay updated on everything involving Kutztown University Athletics at KUBears.com and tune in for weekly broadcasts every Thursday at noon on KUR. <laughs>